In this video, I want to talk about how to select images to be used in Photoshop, particularly in composite files. I've noticed over the years that uh, beginning students uh, have a really a hard time sometimes figuring out which images are going to work well for the various techniques that they're learning. So my suggestion here is that you create a source file, a little collection, um, I call these Photoshop source files, with some subsets of images that might work for different for different uh, different techniques, different processes. In this case, what I'm going to show you today is how to think about photos that might work well for composites. Now I have a bunch of different categories here, backgrounds, blending, foregrounds, portraits, selections. Uh, I'm going to be looking at, I'm going to show you the backgrounds, foregrounds, and selections folders where I've just taken some of the photos that I already have and put them into these folders as possible sources for a composite photo. This can be really handy for you. You can do it with photos that you already have or once you get used to it, you can go out and start shooting them. So let's look at backgrounds. Backgrounds of skies are really important backgrounds. And I tend to, if I have my camera with me, if I see a sky that looks particularly wonderful, like this one here that we're going to use later on, I go ahead and make a picture of the sky. And I'm really careful to actually hold my camera up and try to get as little interruption as possible, because I'm thinking about how I might use that in Photoshop. I even photograph things like this inset of a book. Let me show you this. Uh, I haven't used this yet, but I just thought, what a cool texture, and it looks very strange in a photo, and it could be really fun for something very abstract or surreal. I've also collected things like, uh, and again, another one I haven't used, I think I may have used this once, a little ugly gutter scene, which could be a really great uh, composite background. But mostly I have skies, I have a little pond scum, I have a couple cities. I'm, this is actually one that I threw together relatively quickly and I, I'm still going to keep adding to it. When I go through my files, I notice these, but this is a great idea to just have an ongoing folder in your catalog that has images that you might be using. Uh, so those are backgrounds. Foregrounds, I'm thinking about images that would, uh, rather than being in the upper half or the background of the image, might be in the lower half or the foreground of the image. And these could be things that have a distinct, uh, a distinct um, subject. So this is, I've actually developed this in Lightroom, uh, but let me look at, show you the original. There we go. So this is the original image. And this has a, this was taken in Joshua Tree, has a nice subject, but I could play around with putting a different background on this one. So it might be very useful for that. I'm gonna go ahead and leave those settings on it. I also have things that, like this, where the foreground is very distinct. The sky might not be exciting, but the foreground is interesting and might be a great thing to put another subject into. So there's a lot of different things that can happen with, with the foregrounds. The last section that I want to show you that I'm going to select for the next demonstration, and I'll talk to you about that, is selections. And this is probably the thing that beginners have the hardest time with. This is a folder of different images that are actually, uh, and actually this one should not be there, but that's okay, it's a collection. Um, these are images that have a single distinct central subject that would be easy to select out and use in another image. Now, I'm picking these deliberately. Let me, let me just talk to you about this a little bit. So this sign actually has a distinct focus. It'd be a little hard to select here, but the sign itself would be very easy to pull out of the background and composite into another image. Here, the Crochet Museum, this little building, is a completely different color and texture than the rest of the surrounding. Very easy to select. This is on a light background. Now, I haven't used all of these, but I'm just throwing them into the folder in case I ever need like the tops of the Joshua tree or if I just want some ideas of different things I can do. So all of these, what's important is that they actually are subjects that are relatively easy to select because they have distinct edges. And this is gonna make them easier to quickly incorporate 
or relatively quickly incorporate into another image. Okay. Now, the one that I chose, oh, goodness, that's funny. It's not in here, but it is in my selection. So we'll go to it. I actually selected three images. This one is an extra. Okay, I selected three images. This one apparently is not in my selections. I'm going to go ahead and put it there now, though, because it might be handy later. Remember, you can drop things into collections from anywhere. So it can be, it can live in two collections, and I can move it from one collection to another one. It doesn't disappear out of the first, it just appears in the next. So I've selected a sky, and I've selected a foreground, and I've selected a subject, these sandhill cranes. And what I want to point out about them, I'm going to get into them, into using these in the next video, is that they have all the, the, the sort of the distinct components or characteristics of these images. The sky is uniform, but nicely textured. It's really interesting, but it doesn't have any interruptions. It has a little bit of this, this little tree sticking up, but it's not a big deal. The vast majority of it is, is open and clear not, with no other subjects in it. That gives us space to work. This foreground is a nice texture. It has um, interesting, interesting textures and colors and layers. It has a sky that's going to be really easy to mask out, which I'll do in the next video. It doesn't really have a single most important subject, which is actually an advantage because I can use this if I'm going to add in another subject, a third layer. This image is a good selection image. I want just the birds. And this is a good choice because the birds are against this very light sky, a little bit out of focus, and the birds are distinct and in focus. It's a real mistake with beginners to choose images uh, that they want to select that are in a complicated background. So for instance, if the sandhill cranes were flying in front of trees or in front of rocks or something that was similar in color and texture or even buildings, that they would be very difficult and time consuming to select out. Photoshop artists are thinking about this all the time. They are looking at the images that they already have and thinking about whether or not they're going to work well to composite, both in subject, but also in the way that they're going to select out and how they're going to look selected and how, how easy or how difficult is it going to be. They're also making photographs. When I have my camera with me, I will see a sky like this and I will immediately say, oh, Great, I'm going to get that sky and I'm going to put it into my archives. And I have a number of these. If you go into my background images, a bunch of these are actually things that I specifically collected to have as background layers. Selections, I'm not thinking about it as much when I do it, although it will happen. I'm noticing it after the fact. But I think that I am more and more subconsciously grabbing images that have a fairly neutral background so that I know that I can select them out. Okay, so I've selected these three images. I have uh, developed them in Lightroom. This is really important and I'll remind you in the next video. And in the next video, I'm going to take you start to finish through a medium complex composited image. So you can see all the steps that I think through as I'm making that image.